So let's jump right into the shroud. And can you set the stage a little bit for people that maybe have heard this name in passing? Sure. But it's one of those, yeah, I've heard this mentioned with maybe, you know, the grail or something, but I don't actually know what this thing is. Bob, what is the shroud? When did it show up? What do we need to know about the background of this object? Sure. The Shroud of Turin is exactly what it, it, its name says that it is. It is a shroud, a burial shroud, a, a piece of cloth that is purported to have been the piece of cloth in which Jesus, this is Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, was buried. So this is a piece of cloth that was said to have been laid over him, uh, and it has what is said to be an image of Jesus. Specifically, it's got something of, on it. It, it. It's it's got a face on it, and so you've got this fourteen something, fourteen foot long piece of cloth, right, linen cloth, with a face on it. And people say, well, clearly this is the face of Jesus. At least that is the legend as it was passed down from generation to generation. Now, many people say, okay, stop, stop right there. <laughs> if you wrap somebody for burial and people instantly think like a mummy, but it doesn't necessarily have to be, but that's typically how you think of it. And then you unwrap these wrappings like the gospels say. It's not going to be a 14 foot long piece of, you know, rectangular piece of cloth with a face. And again, it, it, it it's like an ochre colored, you know, impression mm -hmm. and it's going to, and it's got eyes and a crown of thorns and it all just, you know, like blasts onto the, like a shadow, you know, blasts onto yeah. there. And this is, you know, the miracle of the shroud. So it, it, if it sounds too good to be true, this is because, and let's just say it right up front, it is. This thing is not genuine. It's not real. It's fake. I mean, it's a real cloth. It's a piece it's, of cloth. The, the object exists. Yes. What and, has been and, brought to it? Question marks. Yeah. And it's got an image on it. And mm -hmm. it's a person. But it's a the, bit of a Rorschach test if you're looking at it. If you want to see, how much do you want to see if it's a crown of, right? So there is a little bit of this, if you go to look up photos of this, sometimes depending on the way has been, the way the photo has been colorized or edited, yeah. it can stand out more or less. And what part of this are we looking at? That there's something, you, there, there's discoloration there. But let's be honest, it was produced to look like the face of a crucified Jesus. So the whoever produced this, and, and let's just call it a forgery. It was a medieval forgery. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a medieval forgery. But whoever produced the Shroud of Turin was attempting to create something that looked like it would have been the face of Jesus. And in that part, eh, they, were, they were somewhat successful because you can see the outline of a face. Mm -hmm. But uh, through this long convoluted story it ends up today in turin where it to torino right where it uh where it is a holy relic and the debate is you know is this thing a medieval forgery or could it actually have been the shroud that covered jesus at least that's how it's marketed to get hundreds of thousands of pilgrims to come in and buy tickets and to spend money and to see this thing which is what the purpose of a lot of these religious relics really is. But that, I think that's the controversy. It's worth emphasizing here. You're talking about the date of this. The shroud mm -hmm. just kind of comes onto the scene in the 1350s that it doesn't, I mean, that's a long history, you know, if you're thinking from yeah. now until then, but that it does just show up one day in 1354, I think is the date that <laughs> normally gets positioned to it, where somebody comes yeah. along to present it to the dean of the church and says, hey, looky, looky, what I have, isn't mm -hmm. this really great? And that's the beginning, which I think for some people, they think the debunking of this is such a new thing. But from no. the beginning, there were questions of its legitimacy, and it was not seen as legitimate almost from the outset. Yeah, and it wasn't coming from, you know, agnostic scholars and skeptics. It was coming from people in the church. 
right? The, the, who, the Pope. Who were rejecting this. Yeah, like like who? Who, who would have been the ones rejecting this? Like, uh, yeah, Pope Clement VII, who <laughs> describes it to be not the true. So, it, yeah, in case you're immediately going down to the comments to say you're just, hey, hey, what? We're looking back to the Pope. We're we're looking right. back to the Pope for some of our information as far as right. how how we're viewing this. But it hasn't always been viewed the same. So if you're looking at the mm -hmm. way popes have talked about it over time, sometimes the language of how they're addressing it or how reverent they are to it has moved depending on their perspective on the object and what it can do. And so one of my favorite details, before we move into the new thing, you know, just in the history, you know, the lore of the shroud. As you go through this stuff, my favorite thing is that in 1453, the granddaughter of the person who first brought it uh, mm -hmm. got in trouble for trading it for two castles and as a result <laughs> got excommunicated. So like, you know, the history of this thing, like, yeah, it's the burial cloth of Jesus and how much are you going to give me for it? One castle, no, no, no. Two castles, We maybe we have a deal here. So there's been a long uh, exchanging of hands, debate, Dealing, it's currency. Wheeling and dealing. It is. It's currency. If you can break off a, a thorn from the crown of thorns and use that, and and we were selling off debts in medieval times for you know for trading this thing, you know the in uh, in 1389 Bishop uh, Pierre d'Arcy de Troyes, he declared it. This is a bishop uh, says that this is fake and you're just using it to to raise money, right? So it's it. These are bishops and popes who are saying this thing's fake. And of course, they're going to come along and, and construct like we do with any uh, artifact, even today that uh, suddenly appears on the black market. They're going to construct some backstory. Well, no, here's the legend of how mm -hmm. it popped up in the 14th century. You know, it, Joseph of Arimathea got it and or Mary Magdalene got it. And he, she gave it to him and, and it's going to, you know, have this artificial chain of custody and who magically brought it to this guy. And it's been here ever since. Right. So they have to construct this this backstory. But, of course, um, who's going to argue with whatever whatever authority is there at the time who's saying, no, if you can get a pope or a bishop to say, no, this is actually potentially legit or, you know, who knows? Maybe it is. So let's let's if you can get that for enough time, it, it adds an a air of legitimacy. Mm -hmm. And then it comes down to the science.